good evening. Or maybe I should say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all who are watching. It's good to be with you this evening. Uh, we decided a, a month or two ago that it would be probably proper and good that we go ahead and do our New Year's Eve uh, devotion, uh, do that online. So that's what we're doing to offer that to all who might wish to have a little New Year's Eve devotion. Some of the thoughts that I'll be sharing this evening really come from our uh, Advent and Christmas theme, which was symbols of salvation. And we took that from the CPH, uh, what they put out, and uh, so some of my thoughts come from that, particularly the Advent uh, daily devotions, uh, Advent and Christmas daily devotion symbols of salvation. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Let's go ahead then and begin, as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. I would like to continue with a psalm that bodes well not only for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, but also in conjunction with our 75th anniversary here at Redeemer that will begin this coming, this new year. We read then from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are as but as yesterday when it is past, or as a white watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath. We are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of our strength, 80 Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those words we just spoke in the Gloria Patri certainly resonate right into our reading that I would like to do for this evening on this New Year's Eve. It's not the normal New Year's Eve reading. However, again, based on our, our, our theme that we follow throughout Christmas and New Year here, uh, I wish to continue with that. Using the gospel according to St. John, the first chapter in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. And he came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. 
But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father. Full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out. This was he of whom I said. He who comes after me ranks before me. Because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Whether you like a, a good book or a good movie, we all like to hear and see a good story. We like a good story, whether that's in a movie or a book. And we like a good story, whether that story is fiction or nonfiction, whether it's real or make-believe or true or made up. And every good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. In the story of Jesus' birth, the main characters are Joseph, Mary, the angels, and later the shepherds. Of course, the main character is Jesus Christ himself. Now, we know this story to be true. In fact, this story we actually call an account. Unlike fairy tales, which begin with words like a long time, a long, long time ago, in a land far, far away, instead, Luke begins his account of the birth of Christ with these words. Luke 2. In those days... A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Jesus' birth, you see, was real and true, taking place in a real time, in a real place, with real people. Christmas and New Year's when we see nativity scenes like I have right here behind me, we see these nativity scenes all over the place, don't we? Most people come in on this part of the story of Jesus. Most people are familiar with only this part of the story of Jesus. And often, even as Christians, we sometimes get caught up in thinking of Jesus' birth as the beginning, right? A new baby born. The beginning of Jesus' story. Oh, but this is not. This is not where his story begins. For that, we have to go all the way back to the very beginning of time. In Genesis 1, 1, we read that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In our reading today, as we just heard, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with the Word. And we read that nothing was made. Nothing has been made that, was, that wasn't made through Him. And then just a little later, John 1.14 reads, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is Jesus. And He was there in the very beginning of time. He was there before time even began. 
He was there in the beginning. He was there in the middle. And he will be there at the end when he returns again. For us living here in real time and real place with real troubles, real struggles, as we live in the reality of sin and death, what good news it is to know that we have a real and living eternal Savior who came into this world in our flesh in the middle of the story to save us for eternity through his real life, real death, real resurrection from the dead. As we begin a new year, we know it will come with all the realities of life in this world. Whether that life is called 2020, 2021, or 2022. All the realities of life in this world of sin and death are real. But may we start this new year in the reality of Christ's forgiveness of sins, new life, and salvation that only Christ can give. Knowing that our Savior was there from the beginning of time should be comforting to us as we await his promised return. For Redeemer Lutheran Church, the new year of 2022 brings us to the 75th year that Redeemer has been proclaiming the good news to all people. Throughout 2022, we will be celebrating our 75th anniversary with the motto, proclaiming the good news to all people. And with that, we will celebrate our anniversary literally every month throughout the year. Because every month we will hold a celebration Sunday once a month, which will include a guest speaker along with a reception and a time for fellowship and some other things happening during that time. A calendar will soon be available to mark celebration events ahead for the year and commemorate dates on which events have occurred throughout our 75 years. And we have all kinds of other things planned too for the new year. And the story of Jesus, Luke's, Luke tells us in his account, and at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Tomorrow is January 1st. Tomorrow we commemorate in the church that event when Jesus was brought to the temple, circumcised and named, literally eight days following his birth. The angel told Joseph to name the baby Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. That salvation from sin, that good news of forgiveness of sin in Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose again for us, is the good news that Redeemer has been proclaiming for 75 years. So tomorrow, as we commemorate the naming and circumcision of Jesus, here at Redeemer, we also are commemorating another event. And nothing's going to happen here publicly. But just to note, that on January 1st, 1947, Redeemer held its first official worship service right here on the corner of 5th and Walnut. There was no church building like I'm standing in here today, but just a large home which they gathered in. No doubt during that first official worship service, they gathered around God's word and sacrament and heard the good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed. And from then on, for 75 years, we have continued to proclaim the eternal word made flesh to save us for eternity. Our promised Savior fulfilled every prophecy that had been foretold about him. To this day, the purpose of his name has not changed. He is still the Savior of the world. 
and all those who call upon him, upon his holy and precious name, will be saved. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, uh, normally, I know this is more of a devotion, uh, but it is good since we're not having an actual service this evening uh, to go ahead and let us confess together, if you will, right there in your living rooms or wherever you're watching me, let us confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to now have a prayer of the church and share a prayer with you this evening. Uh, following that prayer, I'll do a collect for peace, the Lord's Prayer, and then the benediction. But before I begin the prayers, uh, kind of an odd time to do this, uh, but just last night and this morning, both pastor and I tested positive for COVID. And so I will keep us in our prayers. I will keep our church family, our families in our prayers today. Uh, but I just wanted you to be aware of that too for both of your pastors. On Sunday morning, neither of us Either of us will be here, obviously. Uh, however, I do want people to know that they can come and gather because we will have a uh, pastor, I believe Pastor Rodriguez from Emmanuel, will be here to conduct the services. Let us pray. As this new year begins, we pray for ourselves, for God's people around the world and for all who call out to him with very, their various needs. We pray. Lord of all ages and generations, bless all who will gather in this place in your name throughout the coming year. Lord, in 2022, we will celebrate 75 years of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your blessings over these years. Be with us now in this new year. As not only we celebrate that anniversary, our anniversary, but that we continue to proclaim the gospel, your good news. Be with all those who labor in mission fields and in the various ministries of our churches and grant them joy in living out their vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring Lord and shepherd of the sheep, Carry your people close to your heart and grant that which is best and brings blessing in every situation of life for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life and of peace, direct the leaders of the nations of the world to be workers for peace so that countries will not raise up sword against one another. Societies may be ordered for the good of all and your kingdom of grace extended without persecution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of mercy and of patience, Bring to repentance all who have turned from your way. Use dedicated and devout people of faith to bring your word to them that they may hear anew the precious gospel of your Son in this new year of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of power and holiness, cause us to grow as your branches. As we gather around your word and sacrament, nourish us and strengthen us to carry on the work you would have us to do at home, at work, or in school to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of goodness and of compassion, 
Be the strength of those who labors, bless our lives, all who guard and protect our neighborhoods and our nation, all those who tend the sick and wounded, all those who build homes and manage businesses, all those who raise and distribute food, all those who teach and guide children here and everywhere. Grant that their efforts may bring lasting benefit to all of us in the times in which we are living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of justice and of righteousness, as your spirit works with us in and through us, help us to act with justice in our society, remembering the poor and those in prison and those with whom our lives intersect who, challenge in, who are challenged in some way. Open our eyes to serve the needs of your na- uh, in your name as your people. We also come before you asking to be with all those, Lord, who are sick or in need of, of anything. Lord, we ask that you be with them, that you would keep them in the hope and the strength that only you can give. Be with uh, Pastor Huffman and myself as now we go through this time of uh, being tested and positive for COVID. Lord, help us endure and get through this and be back to our, our service of our families and our church. Be with all those, Lord, who are dealing with COVID at this time. Uh, protect and guide them. And again, be with all those that, with any challenge and physical needs. Lord, turn them to you, the one and only, who is full of grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of time and eternity, we bless you for the faith and witness of those who have completed their earthly journeys, whose memories inspire and bless us. Grant that we follow in their way, looking to- forward to a great and everlasting reunion in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and any other things you would have us ask for, ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness as we keep watch for your reappearing, reappearing through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanking God for his faithfulness in the year now past, let us enter into the new year confident of his blessing. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. God's blessings and a happy and healthy New Year.